times three my name is Kenisa and today we are going to be doing a highly requested video on part two of potty training your Yorkie <clears throat> so I've been getting a bunch of questions and wanting more specifics and more specific examples so you asked and I have risen to the occasion to get these things for you and I am going to show you examples of how I started with my dogs um, using the confinement method, I did not use, I did not crate train. So if you have questions about crate training, um, I know a little bit, but that's not the method I use. I practice using the confinement method. So when you get your puppy, you want to keep them in an area that is very strict and controlled. For me, when I got my dogs, I gated off every other room in the house and we were only in one designated room together. And whenever I would leave the house, I would put them in their little runner areas and it would have a potty their bed and their food bowls. With that area you want to make sure that there's no floor space available. So you want to make sure that the only option they do have is to go to the potty on the pee pad because they don't want to pee in their bed and they don't want to pee by their food. So that is extremely important it proved to be extremely successful for me. So we're just going to really get into that's the most that's the general idea of it we're going to get into the meat and bones. So the first thing I have is to always monitor your pup. You have to keep a close eye on your dog because it can be very, very sneaky. Especially, especially with Yorkies because they're so tiny. Sometimes it's hard to tell when they're going to the potty. And so you have to be very mindful of them because they'll look like they're just sitting down and they're peeing. So keep a close, close eye on them to make sure that if you see them sniffing around on the floor, if you see them walking in a concentrated circle, get them to the potty area immediately and say, go potty, go potty. So therefore, they'll put two and two together. And I think another thing, a lot of questions that I were getting is dogs are having accidents, they're having accidents. I think that it's very important. If you have a small, tiny Yorkie like I do, they don't have huge bladders. So if you're doing the outside training thing, I think it's a little bit more work because you have to get them out a lot more especially if you're going for a long stretch of time because obviously their bladders are small and they can't hold it in my opinion so I think that with a lot of people who are having issues with the accidents it could be because you're potty training your dog to go outside and they're not being taken outside enough this is why I opted to potty train inside because for me they always have a bathroom available they always have a potty available to go to they never have to hold it when they have to go they can feel free to go and it just it works out for me you want to make sure when you do have your puppy pad and your puppy pad holder which obviously I will show you guys what the puppy pad looks like that <clears throat> you keep it on a floor that is easy to clean um, I know that some people won't like this but I keep both of my pee pads in each corner of the kitchen I know some people don't want to have that in the kitchen but for me the puppy pad doesn't smell because a it gets cleaned every day with Clorox wipes and bleach B whenever there's poop or pee I'm or whenever there's poop I immediately pick it up and because it's cleaned every night and the puppy pad is changed out it doesn't hold an odor a lot of, I know some other people keep their puppy pads in the laundry room or in the bathroom you just want to make sure you don't keep it on carpet I mean if you want to keep it on carpet you can but I feel like it could be a lot of mess if there's a little bit of spillover I know sometimes my Marley can miss aim and it gets on the floor and it would be a lot more of a hassle if that floor was carpet versus laminate floor where I can just take a Clorox wipe and clean it up really quick and no big deal so be sure you strategically place your puppy pads if you're going to be training to go on the inside and if you do have a small dog and you're having issues with pottying or accidents in the home you may want to consider at least adding maybe one pee pad in for longer stretches of time or just having one there for the option so then you can have your dog train and go inside or outside i think that's a great option and a great compromise for you and your dog i did say it's important to choose a specific area i'm not sure if i really went into detail but that is extremely important because your dog needs to know where the potty is you can't go changing the potty every other day because they're going to get confused they need to know where their potty area is so when they have to go pee they know exactly where to go so try to keep it in the same i never move therapy pets 
that is their area that's where they belong and that is where they stay so even if we're upstairs doing something if they have to go potty they'll go downstairs and go right to their area and it has their scent there so make sure you keep a designated area that works for you and your family also to go along with that don't let your dog choose the area if it's not a good area i know some people have a problem with oh he keeps peeing right here on the carpet he keeps peeing right there you can't be like oh well just put a pee pad there because that's where he goes no, that's your dog training you. You want to train your dog to go to the potty. So you have to get them to potty in that designated area. And if they're having accidents in one specific area, you need to watch them whenever they go to that area. So then you can direct them to the proper area to go potty. So you want to make sure that, again, you choose the area. Or if your dog does choose a good area, if he does choose a nice corner in the back of the kitchen, perfect thing you guys are set up. But if he chooses a bad area like the middle of the living room, then we need to address that and have him move it to the proper area of your home okay another thing that I have seen to be mistakes that people have is they don't keep the potty area clean which is extremely important because your dog can sometimes not want to go on a dirty potty I know a lot of people think that oh I have to leave poop on the pad so he'll sniff it and go there that's true but it's to an extent when I first started potty training my dogs when it was time to change the pee pad I may just tap it on a little bit of pee or if there's a little bit of poop smeared on the pad just Put a little bit you don't want to have a crap ton of poop and a whole pissy pee pad <laughs> for your dog to go on because they're not going to want to go on that because it's dirty so it's okay to um do that because i think that it's important to make sure that they follow the scent when they're puppies and that is vital in training so when you are getting rid of an old pee pad just take the new pee pad tap it on a little bit of pee and if you see like a little you know poop poop stain rub it on there and that is more than enough for them to get the scent and make sure that you're cleaning it daily like I clean the pee pads every night just make sure you're keeping it clean for your dog because obviously you wouldn't want to go to a filthy potty so why do you expect your dog to all right and so another thing that I've already mentioned is how important it is to be vigilant of your dogs and to know your dogs kind of pee and poop patterns like I know for instance when Zoe is gonna go poop she does a whole circle thing for a good minute just circling around the pu puppy pad, sniffing and circling. So I know, okay, she's gonna poop. So you wanna make sure that you know your dog and you know their patterns before they go to the bathroom. If you see them acting a little strange, if you see them sniffing around, if you see them being really concentrated on the floor or anything, move them to the potty area. That is important and it really does help with training because if you get them there and they potty and you praise them, you know, they'll know, okay, this is a good thing. And another thing to do is if you know they've done an activity, like if they're really excited, if they just drank water, if they just eat, ate, if they're running around playing, check them, take them to the potty. Hey, go potty and see if they need to go. So after they eat or if you see them playing or being excited, get them to the potty and just see if they have to go potty and let them know. Go potty and they'll get adjusted to that. Another thing that you need to do is if when you're home and of course you have your dog in their strict area, you need to follow them to the potty and make sure they don't get distracted along the way because they may have all the correct intentions on going to the potty but they may get distracted and want to bite on this or play on that and end up peeing on the floor so you want to make sure that they're going to the potty and as they progress along you can follow them less and less and less and then eventually you want to follow them at all because they'll know to go immediately to the potty another thing to do is to have your potty area set up when my dogs were puppies in training. I already had the potty treats there because when they were potty, they expected their treat. So I would have uh, a thing of Cheerios. You can use Honey Nut or Original Cheerios or whatever treat you decide. It shouldn't be a big treat. It should be an easy little treat. They can get rewarded, have their hype and their fame, and they live in their glory for a moment. And then we can, you know, of course, move on. So I would have their treats and a clicker. Clicker is very instrumental because that sound represents a positive action. When they hear that sound, they know, okay, I've done something good. I've done something that makes mommy or daddy happy. So what I would do when they would pee, I would click. And then you have to really put on the show. You have to praise them and get extremely excited and extremely happy. And just go above and beyond like they just want a Grammy Award or something like that. Like you really have to let them know this is a great thing. And then you follow up with a nice little treat. And that's how you do it. And now you do it, you do it. I was pretty consistent with it for mm, the first 
good maybe eight to ten months with my dogs and I just made sure to give them a treat and they would go potty and they expected it and so after a little bit what I did was after they would go potty of course I would say good job I didn't do the pr I toned down the praise about eight or nine months I didn't go crazy excited I would say you know good boy good girl and before they got a treat I would make them do a command so okay you need to sit down stay and then they will get their treat and that's how we kind of transition it to where they're working for it a little bit harder because now you're knowing to go potty i don't need to put on this show i'll let you know hey good job I'll give you a pat on the head now i need you to do a command so you can earn this treat a little bit you can work a little bit harder to earn this treat and eventually after that they just go to the potty and that's that i don't say good job i don't say anything because they know that's what they're supposed to do sometimes if i catch them i'll be like okay good job marley and then randomly if i feel like it i give them a treat but now, because they know that's what they're supposed to do, it's expected of them, I don't really do too much of anything when they go to the potty except for clean it up. Okay, so now we're going to get a little bit more into detail about the confinement area. Like I said in the beginning of the video, you want to make sure that when your dog, whenever you are not home, you do not leave your dog out. You leave them in that specific designated confinement area. It, I promise you guys, it really works for me and my pups. So whenever I would leave the house, even if I was, when I lived in apartments, I live in the house now, even if I was taking the garbage to the dumpster, a 10 minute walk, I would put them up in their area where they are supposed to go because in those 10 minutes there could be an unnecessary accident that could have been avoided if I wasn't lazy and I just put them in their area. So in this area, like I said, you want to have a pee pad, a bed, and water bowls. Now I work from home now, but when I did not work from home, that is where they would be for eight hours. And there was more than enough room for them to walk around. And I would leave three toys, a fun toy, a soft toy, and a thinker toy. And that would be in their area. And by the time I go home, they would have their poop and their pee in their area. So you want to make sure that your area, your confinement area is set up and you don't switch, swap things around. If you have your potty on one side of the confinement area, it needs to stay there. Don't switch, swap your potty around because you want to redecorate the potty area have your potty your bed and your water or your water your bed and your potty or however you want to do it you know what i'm saying i like to personally keep the potty as far away from the food and water as possible so i like the bed to be in between so make sure that you just keep it the same so they're familiar with it and they don't have to make adjustments as you decide to change your mind and like i said it's important that they don't have any floor space you don't want them to be able to go pee in the corner of the, the thing you want it to be to where it's only the those things are covering up all their floor space so they don't really have too many options and they do not want to you know the saying goes you don't poop where you sleep they don't want to do that <laughs> they definitely don't want to poop where they eat so make sure that you just have it nice and compact for them but enough space of course for them to stretch out not too crazy and like i said i'll show you an example and i'll put the dogs in there so you can kind of gauge how much space they have while they're in the potty area all right guys so this is the setup that i was telling you guys about nice and simple and you see that i have the potty area please excuse the potty tray if you do see a little bit of pee on there <laughs> need to clean it today i haven't cleaned it for the night it's not the end of the day yet for us so i will be cleaning this tonight like i said with the clorox wipes and bleach to make sure it stays sanitized for my pups the next thing that we have is their bed where they hang out in the bed where they used to hang out in the bed and the final thing we have are their food bowls and trays i like to keep water in their bowls and of course their food bowl in the morning so this is it guys you see that there's virtually barely any space for them to pee anywhere but on their puppy pad, which is exactly what you want. You want to take away that option. So the natural choice would just be the puppy pad. You don't want them to have, oh, I can just pee right here in the corner. No, you want them to pee there. This is very important. And this uh, runner, I got this from PetSmart, but I'm sure you can get these on Amazon for a lot cheaper. I think they run about $70 at PetSmart, but I would definitely check Amazon if you are interested in picking up something similar to this if i do remember i will leave a link to one similar in the description box below from amazon and most likely a lot cheaper this is a top paw um 34 inch this is a top paw 34 inch exercise pin with split door okay guys and i did just want to show you guys an example of what it looks like with a dog in there so marley is in there hanging out and he's, as you can see, it's not cramped up. He still does have space to stretch out and move. But he still just has his potty pad and his food bowl. So you can just kind of 
guesstimate the space. Marley is five pounds, and this is what it looks like with him in there. So you can kind of guesstimate how I think we may have a potty here in a second, you guys. Oh. Nope, I think I distracted him. But this is what it looks like. I will, I'm trying to get them to go potty on camera, but like I said, now that we're out of the strict training phase, they kind of just go when they want and I just clean it up. But um, that's what it looks like with him in there. When I have the dogs out, a lot of people come up to us and a perfect example is this weekend, um, there was a rescue dog event that I took the dogs to to support and you, you purchase stuff for donations, whatever. But a, a lady came up to me and she was like, I heard these, this breed is hard to train or Yorkie's hard to train. And honestly, my answer is no. If you are consistent with your dog and if you do what you're supposed to do, they will do what they're supposed to do. So if you keep their potty area where they're supposed to, you keep up their after potty routine with the praise, the treats, or the praise, the clicker, and the treat, and you keep that going and you do your part, they will do they they will do their part. And that is my experience. And a lot of people say they have problems with training the Yorkies, and a lot of times it's not about training the dog, it's about training the parent. So you have to train yourself to follow through and do what you're supposed to do because they, they live on routine, they live on schedule. So if you do what you're supposed to do, they will do what they're supposed to do. They'll follow suit. So it really just boils down to commitment and dedication and consistency in getting your dog trained, in my opinion. And also just remember too, I did touch on this a little bit earlier, but if you have a Yorkie and they're a smaller dog, you may, I suggest, I really suggest training them to go inside because I feel like it'll save you so much heartache and pain and frustration. Because they're so small, their bladders are tiny. Obviously a five pound dog is not gonna have the same size bladder as a 100 pound rock rider. It's just not gonna be the same. So you have to make adjustments according to their size. So I would always recommend training to go inside. And like I said, you can have a versatile dog to where they can go outside or they can go inside. But I think that you should always have the option to go inside, especially if you're not gonna be home for an extended period of time. You can't take them out as much as they want to because I've seen Marley go pee two, three times an hour, you know, two, three, four times an hour and then go poop. And I don't wanna have him sitting there holding it because I'm too lazy to get up and go outside. So I think it just works best for smaller dogs to train inside. I just really wanted to preach on that one more time. Uh, for you guys just to really know that home that you know they have tiny bladders they don't have the same size bladders as us or larger dogs so just bear that in mind when you are potty training your pup and also some people have older dogs that they just adopted it may take a little bit longer but they are fully trainable you can teach an old dog new tricks that myth is not true if you if you're dedicated and committed enough and you're consistent that old older dog will catch on and will be able to catch on to the potty training methods that you have set in motion for them all right guys one thing that I did forget to mention is that one accident does not mean you have to throw out all the progress you made if you ever heard the expression don't throw out the baby with the bathwater we all make mistakes we all make accidents so if they do have an accident or so even when they're fully potty trained doesn't mean they're not potty trained it simply means they had an accident sometimes even though my dogs are fully potty trained Sometimes they do make a mistake and that is normal. We are not perfect, so don't expect them to be perfect. So if there is an accident, for me, I just clean it up. I don't yell at them, I don't make a fuss. I just clean it up and continue to go about my day. I don't even give that any attention. And so therefore, if they have an accident, I was like, okay, let me put a little bit more into my praise. So once I see them do go where they're supposed to go, I'll be a little bit more excited than normal so therefore just to reinforce what they've already learned months ago that that is where you go and that is where you get attention you don't get attention when you go somewhere that you're not supposed to go so please just bear that in mind don't get discouraged if they have an accident every once in a while you want to just really focus on positive reinforcement staying consistent making sure your potty potty area is set up again with your clicker your treats and your praise and that is everything that I have for you guys today on potty training. I really hope this video was detailed enough. And if you guys have any more questions, please let me know. I'll be glad to do a part three on this potty training thing. And I will definitely see you guys in the comments. Do not forget to check out our website, www.thoserookiestimes3.com. Uh, great for Christmas presents. Great for presents, period, for your dog. If you want your dog to be fashionable and have a beautiful, handcrafted, 100% cotton leash, definitely check out our website. And let me know what you think. 
And also, do not forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. Bye, guys.